Welcome to Trailbusters. Stick with us over the next 12 months as we bust the local and international trail scene and have a look at what it takes to be an adventurer and make trail films. In this episode, we head into the Swatberg and chat with the first ever runners in the Kango Caves. Then it's up to Joburg for a run amongst the roses. We also take a walk on the wild side with David Greer as he traverses India. Finally, we profile adventuring filmmaker Tom Maleka, the trail collector. The ruggedly beautiful Swatberg landscapes have been host to many pioneering feats and in 2011 this historic area welcomed the first ever Dryland Traverse, a mystical environment to host a magical sport. I think the reason why you, you sign up and you put toe to line, it's, it's really just to be out there, um, part of nature, part of the reason why we, we all dwell this earth is, is to, 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 to find a reason and, and you know these mountains you, you can't hide the fact that, that someone great has created all of this and, and you become part of it, you become part of it out there and, and sometimes when the rush of the city and, and all the demands are, are just getting too much you can go out there and, and, and just feel at one and feel at peace with your, your, you know, your creator and, and that is for me that's, that's trail running. Uh, the run in the Kango Cave itself was amazing. I mean, it's just the views that you could see and everything inside the Kango Caves. I mean, all lit up in the dark like that. It was, it was awesome. It was really a special run. Really strange because you kind of go down some steps and then you kind of wind around, but you've got no clue where you are. You, you, it's like a maze it, and, and, and you windy, windy, windy and um, yeah, but it's more like the uh, ghost house because it's all dark and there's lights around and uh, you don't know where you're going and yeah, it was quite fun that. Although the caves have been known since the early Stone Age, thanks to efforts from Dryland events, the 2011 athletes will be known as the first ever to run a race in these ancient caves. Situated at the head of the picturesque Kango Valley, these dripstone caverns, with their vast halls and towering formations, form the underbelly of the Great Swartberg mountain range. Yeah, it's a matter of just being in the elements, being out in nature, just going to places that you never go to. You know, you're, you're in nature and you know, nature is food for the soul. So, you know, when you're outside and just running, running in nature, it's just, it's, you just feel alive. Once they had ascended from the depths of the caves, the runners could experience the massive beauty of the hulking Swartberg Mountains, the jagged scenery dwarfing the athletes and giving them a bit of an ant's perspective on life. Um, I'm just loving this. Um, this is really something different to, to what I've done before. Normally, you know, it's, it's more rainforesty like or um, even when it's, when it's out and dry, it's not this hilly or this mountain the size of these mountains and yeah, I'm enjoying every, every day so far, every stage is beautiful and it's, 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 you know, it's like, almost like laid out here, handmade trails and it's, it's just something special that I've never experienced before. My life without running would be be, oh man, I, I can't even find the words to describe it. So, so that's one thing. And then trail running, because you're out in nature, you know, um, you know, most of us sit in offices all day. So you really, I mean, for me, I, I just really, really appreciate being outside 
So I really value my time outside. Um, you know, for me, running in a forest is it's absolute soul food. So, you know, and when you're out in the mountains, in nature, you, you're in things that are real. Um, you're in sort of created nature, you know, it's beautiful. You feel rejuvenated. So, running, trail running, uh, as a lifestyle, um, it, yeah, for me, it just enriches my life. Indeed, the life of the trail bus is one to desire. Be part of the next Dryland Traverse by visiting www.dryland.co.za and entering for 2012. And now, for a change of scenery and vegetation, it's time to smell the roses as we head to Johannesburg to take a look at the growing Running the Roses Trail Run. This event was held as a fundraiser for the Suzanne Stradom Heist, taking place just north of Pretoria on Ludwig's Rose Farm, which this year celebrated its 40th anniversary. It offered a trail running experience for all shapes and all sizes. Trail running is a booming sport, but not everyone is willing to take the leap into the grueling stage races or off-road half marathons. If you're looking to do your first trail run or just want to get off the couch, whether you're looking to be first or just take part with the whole family, the Ludwig's Run of the Roses caters for you. Trail running is not only for the lean, mean running machines. If you want to get into the sport, there are many trail runs out there for you. The Ludwig Rose Run as well as the rest of the Eco Series offer distances from 1 km, 7 km, all the way to 15 km. Find out more and enter online at www.enteronline.co.za In this age of high-rise buildings and fast cars, of commuter trains and big planes, it's time to get off the treadmill, get off the tar, Get out there and taste some dirt. It's time for you to do some trail busting. And now, for a run of slightly more epic proportions, we catch up with proudly South African adventurer, David Greer. Made famous by his previous escapades, which include running the length of the Great Wall of China, circumnavigating South Africa on foot, and paddling from Africa's west coast all the way to Madagascar, and then traversing the length of the treacherous island. David has now set his sights on conquering the subcontinent on foot. Trailbusters will stay in touch with Dave over the next three months as he and his seconding crew send us footage collected along their grueling journey. Alongside his pure passion for adventure and the outdoors, there is a deeper reason for Dave taking on these extreme challenges. It's the Sipla Miles for Smiles Foundation. The Sipla Miles for Smiles Foundation was set up to challenge guys to go and achieve the impossible, but in the process, to make a difference. And it's to bring awareness to the plight of children born with clefts and most importantly to raise funds and through Operation Smile do corrective surgery on these children. It's simple, give them back their God-given right to a smile. Every child has the right to a smile. Out of all my journeys, this run of India is probably the most diverse terrain, starting up in the foothills of the Himalayas in Kashmir and then coming down through the edge of the great Indian desert through Rajasthan and then the central part of India is round Pune are these massive mountain ranges that go up to 1800 meters and then they, they're covered in dense jungle and then you go down from this and you hit the coastal plateau and then finally as you hit the southern part of India you hit these 
beautiful palm groves and coastal sort of forested dunes. And the, the, the terrain just never stops evolving and changing, but the beauty is there. If it's in the most desolate areas or the most vegetated areas, it's just astounding the beauty that one finds in India. If I try and compare India to the other journeys, I think when I started out I had no idea what I was in for. China was, was the first and it was, it was this radical terrain and it was, it was mystical and everything and the South African run was sort of at home and, and I knew what to expect ahead of me. Madagascar just nailed it. I mean, that was absolute nightmare in Madagascar. It was the most physical thing I've been through and, and I got the sickest. India just took me from a totally different perspective. India has become, I think, the hardest mental journey that I've ever been through. I, I now know why people sort of just give up in the end because eventually the, the whole situation just gets too much and you can't handle it. You can't maintain your focus and, and that's been the hardest for me in India. Well, the simple miles to smiles run of India has, has begun. I've been going for roughly a week and just done over 200 kilometers, starting up at this temple above Srinagar and coming down the mountains through Kashmir. And it's just a wash with military. I, I never realized there would be so much military on, on this journey. And, and we got raided one night. We've been forced off different areas where we can't go. We've had to scale mountains to, <laughs> to circumnavigate military bases where, we, where we're not allowed to, but all in all, it's, it's still been a, a beautiful journey. Yesterday, I spent an extra 10 k's running up here with Hamish, right up, and then we hit this tunnel. There's a tunnel that runs for two kilometers through the mountain, and we're not allowed to go through the tunnel. So we had a whole big hoo-ha with the, the military again, and we had to drive through the tunnel and camp on the other side. So this morning at five o'clock, we packed up, we came back through the tunnel, and we've driven 10 k's down the valley and we found this path and this is the old mountain pass that, that probably was closed about 30 40 years ago and um, we're meant to get permission to go up here but we just thought it was dark and we're just going to go we've been warned about tigers and bears in the area but if you look up here i know why so we got a 29 kilometer hike through these mountains back to the place where we slept last night and then we'll, we'll carry on our journey and then coming further down into, into Punjab was, was pollution. I mean, the, the pollution just absolutely slaughtered me. And being an asthmatic, my chest just closed up and, and uh, it, was, it was horrific. This is not mist. This is morning pollution. And it hangs around 90% of the day. You know, me being an asthmatic, I'm struggling with this, this air quality. But you can imagine the millions of people living in India. And they've got to go through this gunge every single day of their life. When one runs a, a massive country like this and there is a lot of freeway running, you forget about tunnels. And all over India we've come across tunnels and the big problem with a tunnel is if there's security there, they won't allow you to run through a tunnel so you have to go over the top of the mountain. And there was this one day that I got into this tunnel, I crept in this ancient tunnel and I was running through the tunnel, there were no lights inside and it had all these jagged edges and the one edge hit me on my head and I tripped and I fell onto the road and I nearly got clipped by a truck but it was, it was one of those days that I thought that's it, I've had it and I managed to roll out the way but uh, that's the danger of, of this road running. With the mayhem of, of the trucking, you know, there, there always comes a lighter side to trucking and uh, we, we started what we called with truck surfing. On a slow hill, you'll hook onto a back of a truck and you'll get into a stride and that truck will just sort of help you up the hill a little way. What makes India special to me is the contrast, the contrast in terrain, the contrast in colors and just religion and people, provinces. They, you've got 50 countries in one year. We've just come down this little side alley to this sort of market in the, in the shade here because it's it's so hot nowadays. But this is just so beautiful down here. A whole whole road of 
of just vegetables as far as you look. Fresh vegetables, star fruit, little granadellas, ginger. What a pleasure to the eye. So I can imagine what the crew are going to buy today for, for dinner. We're going to have something spectacular. While in, I'm in the Punjab province, I, I picked up the problem that I had with my bladder and I started urinating blood and I thought I had Bilharzia again and I ended up in hospital, I ended up in, in, in Blooming Theatre. I can't believe this. I come to you for a little sort of friendly investigation at the doctor and I end up going to theatre. I don't know if Nick was signing our little forms here, I don't know if it, if it was him that set me up or something, but I don't know what's going to happen to me. If I stop playing it, your turn will come next. The highlights started to come out of it when we hit Rajasthan and just the open spanses and we're away from the truckers and it's just the, the beauty and, and the edge of that great Indian desert. And the further you go and the more you get into this journey, the more the journey starts to grow on you and the more the people start to inspire you and the more the environment sort of draws into you and, and, and just I, I can feel my, my spirit lifting every kilometre I run further and further south and I'm starting to to understand more about India, more about the people, and just, it's just got a whole different take on life. Uh, a way of life that I haven't come into contact with before, and I think that's that's what's starting to to really stand out to me on this journey. But I've still got a bit, uh, quite a way to go, and, and uh, yeah, I'll see where this leads. Watch next month as Dave leaves the crazy chaos of the cities and tackles the harsh Indian deserts in part two of Dave's India Adventure. Trailbusting is a picturesque adventure that inspires the soul and often one's creative juices get flowing. Tom Maleka, the trail collector, tells us how he captures his trail memories. collector is a nickname I gave myself it's basically basically more of a joke but with a bit of truth in it I mean I've always got this list in my head with places where I want to go trails that I want to ride and yeah maybe it's something you can say about me that I collect trails yeah I grew up in the western part of Germany, close to the Dutch border, and um, it's a very, very flat area, about the highest hill, 30 meters high, and when I moved to Switzerland about three years ago, I was just so amazed by these big mountains, by the awesome scenery around, that I just tried to spend as much time there as possible. You might say that I'm a one-man production team, because I do the filming, I do the editing, and many of the times I also do the writing. I put up the camera, set it up, ride past, get back, pick up the camera again. I consider myself to be a backpack filmmaker. I try to keep everything very small, very lightweight, because all the equipment that I use has to fit into a backpack. I have to carry it up the mountain. I've got a small DSLR with a flexible tripod, which is the workhorse in my productions. and. Um, yeah, it works for me. It's a very minimalistic setup, but it does the job. I built myself a cable cam, a piece of wood basically with wheels. You put it on a zip line and it goes swoosh. Uh, gives some amazing footage, but it's still a very simple setup. It must be very lightweight and very small. If, it, if you can't carry it on the back, it doesn't work for me. 
I'd say my favorite piece of equipment is probably my helmet camera. Very small, you can mount it anywhere on the snowboard or um, on the bike and it gives you all these crazy unusual kinds of perspectives which put you right into the action. That's something I really, really like about it. Hi, I'm Tom Malecha from Zurich, Switzerland and you've got to bust out. To see more trail busting, visit Tom's Vimeo channel, www.vimeo.com forward slash Filmer von Draußen or his website, filmer-von-draußen.ch. Catch trail busters in March as we talk to the group of South Africans that conquered Uhuru Peak Kilimanjaro without anything coming between the bare soles of their feet and the harsh African terrain. You know, if, if, if you get up and, and, and you want to go and do something, you don't have to do something crazy. You can get off your couch and go up Table Mountain. There are the most incredible walks and hikes there. Start off with something small. And as you get more and more into these trails, so you'll see how nature starts to infuse in your life and draws you out. And the more you're out there, the more you actually appreciate what's going on around us and the beauty of, of, of the surroundings. But you know, everyone's, as I say, everyone's Everest is, is a different height. Mine might be here, yours might be here, but it's as difficult for me to get there as it is for you to get there. So, you know, it just takes a little bit of effort, a little bit of inspiration, and, you know, you don't know what difference your little journey can make. So, I challenge you, you know, go out there, blaze your trail, go do something. 
episode one of Trail Busters Dusted. Stay tuned for more great trails and a whole bunch of busting over the next 12 months. Trail Busters, you've got to bust out.